It is time once again for the weekly wrap up. These are stories that I collect throughout the week that I did not do a full video on, but I think they're worth mentioning. So let me start here with one of CNN's two big hires this week. That is a former Trump spokesperson, Alyssa Farah, to join CNN as a political commentator. This was the same day that the U.S. hit 800,000 deaths from COVID-19. Of course, in part because of the misinformation and the downplaying of coronavirus during the Trump administration. But it's just incredible. Can you point to a single, just one, one person that worked for Bernie Sanders that works at CNN on a regular basis? That is a regular contributor to CNN. One Bernie spokesperson. There isn't one. One Democratic Socialist. One, forget, the, one Social Democrat. Is there one person that, that works at CNN on a regular basis that believes in just basic social spending? CNN is incredibly right-wing. Now, no, it's not Fox News. It's not Newsmax. But the way they frame these issues, in particular from an economic perspective, incredibly right-wing. Pro-corporate, pro-billionaire. And this latest hire is just another example of that. This is a great piece of news from Polygon here. North America has its first video game union at Vodeo Games. So Vodeo or Vodeo, however you say it. Uh, by the way, they have a game out that I want to check out. <laughs> when, when discovering this story, I learned about Beast Breaker, which sounds pretty awesome. So I may check this game out. But um, this is good to hear. So the video game industry is notoriously one of the worst when it comes to workers' rights. Just absolutely atrocious, super long hours, especially, dur especially during crunch time. I used to um, report on the video game industry way back in the day. So I have some familiarity with this industry. And just absolutely horrendous hours, horrendous uh, overworking. The impact on their families is just atrocious. So it's good to see here uh, Vodio... And and by the way, they didn't actually, they never at any point fought them. So management was perfectly fine. They allowed the union to, to, to form. They had their contract. There was no fight at all over this. So fantastic to actually see. I mean, it's such, such a rarity to see management act that way, but they were completely open to it, totally for it. And uh, it's one of these companies where they, they already work. They already have, from my understanding, four day work weeks. So, and that, that's before the union. They already had, you know, four-day work weeks. They have all these fantastic benefits that most companies don't have. So to have, on top of that, also a union to have real representation for the workers there is just fantastic to see. And I hope more companies uh, follow suit. Next one here. So this is a clip. This is going to be um, Geraldo challenging Sean Hannity. So recently this week, or not this week, recently this week, <laughs> this week, text came out showing Hannity texting the Trump administration during the January 6th riot, basically saying that Trump should stop what he's doing to come out and, and, and stop this. Well, Geraldo uh, confronts Hannity on that here. I beg you, Sean, to remember the frame of mind you were in when you wrote that text on January 6th, and when Laura did, and when Brian did, and when Don Jr. did. Remember the concern you had. Remember the, the frustration you had at our, our beloved 45th president. Yeah, because Where I wanted, was he? I how, wanted a riot to end. How can he be end? doing this? Why doesn't he say something? Why? Okay, yeah, but, and he, but, you and, wanted, but the point is saw, he did. You saw, unfolding before your, he you saw did. unfolding before your very eyes an attack on democracy. Let me give it to an Dan. An attack on the Constitution. The point, an attack but on he the did not call for the United States He of said America. peacefully, and then he did do it. Dan, you have less than a minute. Look how Sean Hannity quickly wants to go to Dan Bongino <laughs> because he doesn't want to hear this legitimate criticism. So this is the issue, as I discussed this week with these texts. It exposes how dishonest these Fox News hosts are on air because all they have done since January 6th is downplay the riot and downplay Trump's involvement in the riot. But if Trump wasn't at the center of it, if he wasn't the reason for it, if he didn't have the power to stop it, then why did they text the Trump administration for him to stop it? It's because Trump played a major piece in that riot. But they're not going to discuss, they're not going to discuss, uh, or discuss how serious it was since January 6th. They've just downplayed it. And Geraldo here calling out Sean Hannity, which, you know, one of the few people that will call out these hosts on air. And uh, it's, it's nice to see. Next clip here. So this is 
Dr. Oz, who's apparently a little a little peeved that media is now, or the Philadelphia Inquirer has announced they will refer to him as Mehmet Oz, his actual name, as opposed to Dr. Oz. Here he is on Fox and Friends. No, they're not. They're putting their thumb on the scale. And here's the thing. There's such an enthusiastic response to the campaign. I'm here in Pittsburgh talking to people, and it makes me optimistic because they've got great ideas. Meanwhile, the Inquirer hates, hates that I'm empowering you, hates that I'm taking on some of the established folks, hates that the entrepreneurial solutions that I'm offering might make sense, and they don't like that I say what I see. So they want to silence me. And I tell you, it is shocking that it would make them that uncomfortable this early in my campaign, but I think it's reflective of the movement we represent. Well, they're trying to cancel you. I saw your Twitter. That's what you said. And the Twitter response that I posted back got a huge response because people see it. I mean, you, you can't look away. Why would the Inquirer get involved in this process? Why would they not want to call me Dr. Oz? Everyone mm -hmm. knows I'm Dr. Oz, but they don't think it's the right thing to do. They think it gives me an unfair advantage. All right. There you see a Republican doing what they do best, playing the victim. That's his name. That's why they're calling you that. Now, personally, I've, I've reported on this idiot twice now since he's announced his run for, for Senate in Pennsylvania. I call him Dr. Oz because it's just easier. <laughs> it's quicker, especially when it comes to naming titles. The shorter a title, the better it normally does. So Dr. Oz is shorter than Mehmet Oz. Um, but that's his name. Like, <laughs> he's freaking out because they're saying they're going to call him by his name. And Dr. Oz is fighting the establishment? What are you talking about? He's not for Medicare for all. He's not for el eliminating the health insurance industry. God, this, go back and watch. If you're fooled by this guy, please go back and watch my first video on Dr. Oz announcing it. I'll link to it maybe above and below on YouTube. Because it's just all hot air. He's just completely playing the right-wing grifter game and saying what he thinks will help get him elected. He recently was on Fox News and was he stumbled over a question about abortion because he knows that personally he probably is not against he probably is pro-choice, but he has to play this game now. So he he basically stumbled over this answer on Fox News over abortion and you could see him. He's just he's trying to play this game but he doesn't know how to do it because it, his actual positions are mixing with what he has to do as, as somebody campaigning. And ultimately, he's going to be like, if you're somebody who, and the reason I pointed this out is because on Facebook, I saw a Democrat in the comments on my Dr. Oz video say that they're a Democrat, but they will vote for Dr. Oz. If you're somebody who thinks that way, <laughs> what kind of power do you think Dr. Oz will have if he becomes a senator in a Republican party? He's going to have no, even even if he, which is not going to happen, but even if he held to his positions, his, I, I guess, secret positions on abortion and other issues that he may have different than what the GOP want, his one vote will do nothing. But the reality is, of course, he's not going to hold to that. He's going to vote along with everybody else in the GOP. It, God, this guy is pulling, pulling one over on people, and it is really uh, sad to see. And it's all because of his name and his... Uh, celebrity status on TV for so long. And I'll just also have to mention here, this is the party that always speaks out against Hollywood. They're always anti-Hollywood. Yet, Ronald Reagan, Donald Trump, Dr. Oz, why don't they factor in? Just incredible. Next one here. Uh, just, I guess, just an extension of the previous story. CNN Smirkonish, Dr. Oz told me he wouldn't sit for an interview because it would upset everyone at Fox. <laughs> God, what a tool. All right, last thing here. I guess I have to mention this. I don't have to, but I didn't mention it this week. Chris Wallace is now with CNN. So he left Fox News as their Sunday anchor, joining CNN Plus, I guess CNN's new online network. Uh, just going to show you full circle here how CNN is a right-wing network. They have no socialist, no Bernie supporter on air, no Democratic socialist, no, not even a social democrat that is a regular contributor on CNN. But when it comes to the right, Donald Trump hires, of course. Who cares? Fox News hires, of course. Bring him in. Showing you once again the right-wing bias of CNN and largely of all media.